What's up, everybody? This is Jason David Frank, the Green Ranger, and you are watching Ranger Wrap Up. Uyza! No, no. I mean, I'm holding on to this one. Hey, look at that jacket. What's going on with that jacket? What's going on? <laughs> I'll wear red, too. I'll wear red, too. Ooh. Let's see if, let's see, let's see if Mike's muted. Let's see if Joe's, uh, Joe's really muted. If not, I don't know. Let's see, let's see if he's muted. Let's see if Mike's muted. Let's see if Joe's, uh, Joe's yeah, really I can muted. hear me. Not, I don't know. Oh, what, why is Joe muted? Hold on. Uh, they're, they're going, they're doing something. Hold on. Can, you hear me? Can, can you turn the view up? Like, I can hear ourselves through our speakers. What is going on? Oh, it's because I'm trying to see. Hold on. I'm trying to see. Let's see. Let's see if he's muted. Let's see if he's muted. I can hear ourselves through. What's going on? So, just kidding. Joke is on happening. you. There we go. There we go. What's going on, Ranger Nation? Can you guys hear me? Somebody give me a thumbs up in the chat. And I hate hearing the sound of my own voice. Get me out of my head. <laughs> Get it out of there, Earthworm Jim. <laughs> Earthworm Jim. Oh my I don't God. know what's happening right now. We do I'm trying to do what's happening right now. You're gonna, you're, 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 gonna, you're, you're gonna hear your own voice because for some reason NDI is not picking up your audio. That's as big as. as no, as, that's fine then. Go ahead and. Yeah, I don't know All what's right. going on. All no right. Idea. Okay, everybody. Sorry, you guys had to sit there and watch us just trying to figure out what's happening. Sorry, uh, Jezzer is not here. He is working. I'm remote, right so here. That means, <laughs> that means uh, working from a technical standpoint, we are horrible at it. So uh, no, it's thank it's, God. This, this You'd is... assume that in the however many years we've been doing this show, that it would have improved. <laughs> no, I think I, feel I like th it's only gotten worse. I think it's, I think only horrible, we do that. Man. I do it's, that. I think we do it for nostalgia horrible. value. I think that's why we do. We you know what we like doing. We like showing up right before we go on, not with a plan, really. Literally, literally. We like uh, we like putting up lights. I wish I had, I wish I could turn this camera around and show you this. Like, I know we like putting mean. up lights. We like doing all this stuff oh. at the very last minute. Sometimes when they say, "Hey, call times," we want to go, the show to go on live at twelve. Call times at we got at least got to be there at eleven forty-five, and I'll be like, "All right, cool. Let's leave it eleven thirty. Dude, that way I can get there <laughs> no, no, by twelve we, exactly. But this time we got here early. Got, got here, here early. early still because uh, we we still. had. We had to literally bring some very important footage here to the oh, studio. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. See, this is this is the problem. This is the problem. I just said bring footage to the studio. You said important footage. It, it is important. Here's the deal. It's exclusive. It's definitely exclusive. But here's the thing. I think that we live in this culture. Anybody watch the Shield finale? We live in this culture of fandom where things get hyped up and taken so so to the extreme that like it's so hard to pull back from that. So 
Look, today uh, we're bringing we, you we, Mephisto. We, I'm kidding. Well, yeah. look, that's why we need our own very our very own Kevin uh, to float around and make sure that we're doing things properly. You know, that's what we need. We have a Kevin here that, that kind of does that. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, we, we do footage. have some we have some fun stuff to talk about today. Now, look, not a ton broken Power Ranger news wise. <laughs> However, with that being said, we still have a lot to talk about. We we haven't really discussed what's going on with this whole. Th- I mean, we now know the thirtieth. Uh, anniversary episode, whatever they happen to call it, movie, mini movie, whatever it's yeah. called. Um, that's its own separate thing than Cosmic Fury. Um, what else? What else did we? Uh, what else Catherine we Sutherland about? and uh, Steve Cardenas are back. Yeah, you can read about that on um, the Illuminati.com. We Simon that. Bennett uh, take, is taking a sabbatical. Yeah, from, Simon uh, Bennett's Twitter. off of Twitter. We'll talk about that a little bit too. Mm-hmm. I don't want to dive too deep into that because anybody yeah, well, can yeah, take a break yeah, from social media, yeah, and that exactly, is allowed. Exactly. Yeah. I just want that to be known right now. Yeah, and we don't want we don't want you guys to like let your expectations be fueled by your speculations. Yeah, so, PMC twenty twenty four. That's a go. Exactly. Also, a little bit of a missed opportunity because you'd assume that there would be one next year for the thirtieth anniversary. Looks like we're just gonna have to fill that void. Um, but well, we already knew that. We already, we already knew that that was gonna happen. What are you well, talking we about? We're doing like a D twenty three or something. What? What? We doing like D twenty three or something? Like, what, what? What are we filling that void with? <laughs> yeah. What? What are you? D twenty three. What are you no, talking about? No, I don't. About? I don't know. Maybe there's a globe. Maybe there's a globe. No, no. We well, we we are gonna. We are. I look. I I mean, I'm put it out there. I've already put this out there. I want to do a viewing globe too. Uh, around that time, but I do want to do something live and in person, mainly because I feel like that's what the fan base deserves. I want to talk about this. People like when, you know, I, and this is the thing, now that I'm a little bit older, I feel like I'm more calm than I used to be in my past. I remember <laughs> when we used to do these shows and I used to be so, I used to be like Jezzer, we'll just say, where he was all <laughs> upset all the time yeah, about everything like that was going on. Yeah, like mad about like this charm curse or whatever. You said oh, exclusive boy. footage, you shut the fuck up. Yeah, right. So, like, I used to be that guy, right? And then I took a step back, and, I, and, and life hit me a little Calm bit. Calm down with the language, man. Life hit me a little bit, and then you start realizing what, what's important. And I thought, really think about this. You do this deep dive, this introspective thing about your life, and you think, why am I so hyped up and mad about this kid's show, right? Well, but yeah. then I think about this, and it's not just a kid's show. This is, what I, this is a big misconception, and I understand how people can think that. But that's not what the case is, because... It's a sense of nostalgia. It's a sense of something you feel a part of that you've grown up with and you've seen through from its inception, right? There you go. It's a little bit more to that than just a kid show to me. So, I mean, I understand, but it's not marketed towards me. At some point it was, but I yeah. think the important thing of Power Rangers is it needs to be marketed for everybody. Well, That's isn't, the that, way isn't that pretty much what's happening with uh, Ant Whistle and blah, blah, blah? Yeah. Well, we don't know because we don't know what that world looks like yet. We, we hear rumors, we hear rumblings, but... Look, dude, at look, the shareholders meeting, they said, you know, great. You know what they said at the Warner everyone. Brothers shareholders meeting like like five years ago when Zack Snyder was helming a universe. Five yeah, that years changed, ago, right? Zack Snyder, those so two. My point, my <laughs> point is it like just and I and so pull the curtain back a little bit. I've been doing this deep dive in the DC universe for a lot of you that are uh, excited about Black Adam. You should be because it's a great movie so far. I would go far as to say. It's the best superhero movie of the year. So it has far. the I mean, Flash. It has Aquaman in it. It nope, has don't do that. Wonder Woman. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Hey, shut up. Shut up. Don't, this don't. is how we lose credibility. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Is, the right, desert man. is the that's credibility it. killer. That that's is your it. new nickname. That's it. The credibility <laughs> killer. I love it. So that's it. Back when back on this tangent, the reason I even spoke about that for a second was because they did a shift. Like that that universe is going through a major shift, right? We, we're seeing the writing on the wall. We're seeing it feel like it's something changing, and I feel like that is in the era. That is in the era for Power Rangers. That, and I feel like we're in the era of change. That's and funny. I'm hoping that that's that's what uh, what we move towards. That's funny. So. The Rock is the catalyst for that. What is his phrase? Like, uh, there will be a shift. The hierarchy of power is about to change in the DC universe. And it That's absolutely exactly does. what's happening. But, Jesser, you are he the did, Black he, Adam he of, did, uh, he did of, say, of Ranger Nation. He did say that the old regime of Warner Brothers did not want yes. to make some moves that they made. And now that it's in new hands, I think The Rock has more power in what he wants to do. Wait, Jesse, you're a DC guy. Why are we not doing a DC show, I feel like? You yeah. and I would be a – and Daniel, like you're a big DC guy. Why are we not doing a DC show? I'm reading the comics. Oh, man. You, you watch the shows. I, yeah, I watch the shows. Like we, both, we all enjoy the films. Wait, like, why are we Daniel, not doing a DC you still show? watch the shows? 
The shows are hard I to get through. I am not watching The Flash. Oh wow, you, you were <laughs> all, you were a count? cast member on that. I, I know, right? But I, I don't I don't count it anymore. Uh, it's really bad. When Grant Gustin publicly said that he wanted to leave and they wouldn't let him, it really made a change for mm. itself anyway. So I mean, it's just proof is in the pudding, and right now the pudding is shit. Excuse me, I'm sorry. The pudding is shib, shib. So uh, just real quick. We, uh, off camera, you guys don't see the conversations we have, but we were talking about Power Rangers a little bit off camera, which is nothing new. No. But one thing that we brought up, though, was that Power Rangers is different than DC or Marvel, mainly because it's it's really sold based on its nostalgia, very much like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, very much like Transformers, yes. very much like G.I. Joe. Yes. Um, and it seems like we're seeing some life put back into the, a lot of those franchises, particularly uh, Transformers. Yep. However, Power Rangers... I feel prime for the picking. Now, I want to dive in a little bit and uh, ask all of you guys in the chat. By the way, I usually ask you guys where you're streaming from and all that good stuff. I want to thank you for joining us on this beautiful Saturday. We have Power Ranger. Uh, I'm sorry. Mega Power Brazil's in here. Um, I love I love those guys over there. Mega Power Brazil. They're amazing. Go follow their content. Uh, Blackwing, you know, you're a part of the team. We got Rangers of the Universe. Morphin Engine Heroes, Team Wall, Johnny Mario, hey. uh, Nathan Arondo, Tone Robinson, Thea Games. Welcome, welcome. Is it all. Thea or is it the A Games? Well, look, the A's, the A's, uh, not capitalized. So I'm just yeah, right, right. So it's say, Thea. I'm going for Thea. Thea. But Robin games, Amaya, Brandon games. Bell. Thank you guys. So here's the thing. Now uh, we were just talking about this new universe that Power Rangers is going to kind of be embarking in embarking on now simon bennett is off of twitter number one thing i want to say about that in my opinion is that everybody deserves a break from twitter everybody deserves a break off of social media if they want to take their break for social media i'm sure people will speculate but it could be for a, a multitude of reasons so let's not dive that deep into that that being said though um i know that there's a lot of speculation on why he's left and this is where we can open this up because this is all and then granted this is all speculation i love speculation um, because we're, I'm not Simon Bennett. I haven't talked to him about like him leaving Twitter. So I have no insider knowledge into this. Um, but there was, uh, him, go he was on Ranger board earlier on, and he was also discussing on uh, Twitter about the previous regime. So that, yeah. that, and, and then I know he's been, he's been very, very active with uh, fan look and fan debate. I know very a lot of, much. a lot of people out there. Uh, I, I think this all kind of stems, I don't want to say starts from this, but it feels like this is a part of it, at least a leaf from it. Um, that there is this thought process that Power Rangers has to have civilian fights in order for it to be Power Rangers. Here's the thing, though, because I'm open-minded and I want to hear what everybody has to say about this. So in the chat, give me your opinion on civilian fights in Power Rangers. Is it a must? Are you okay without them? Does it only need to fit the story? How do you see it? Is it a part of Power Rangers' DNA? I wonder how you guys see it. But before we do that, Daniel, what do you feel about civilian fights in Power Rangers? Now, who'd have thought that when we were watching some kids show some 30 years ago, 29 years ago, whatever it may be, that we'd be having a conversation almost 30 years later about civilian fights in Power Rangers? Now, when I was a young kid, these are the things we really remember the most. Yeah. Right? Seeing these young actors doing these stunts, fighting these putties back at the park yeah, where we grew up at. Literally definitely. that Kennethon Park, we call the Andrew Park now, yeah. but it's literally blocks away from where we lived, and we used to yeah. go there all the time as kids, um, even prior to Power Rangers. Yeah, man. So civilian fights in Power Rangers to you, is it a must? Is it in its DNA, or does it need to serve a, st a story purpose? What what do Power Ranger fights do you mean? It's uh, I feel it's a must, and it is in DNA, just as much as uh, having to create a, a work of art from something that is almost like so concocted so almost inconceivable to do so you're taking uh, footage from something uh that's made uh literally a world away when it comes to culture itself and you're taking it adapting it and creating a story that's fluid for us to follow that already is like when you think about that that is hard work Absolutely. for the writers for the directors for the editors that is hard work and then now to say we're gonna kind of step away from that create something our own that's original hmm, interesting Somebody said that would happen. And then from there, uh, go ahead and throwing in the live action or amping up 
the live action stuff. I mean, there was a moment where I was watching uh, um, Cobra Kai, and I was like, the fight scenes here in Cobra Kai are the best I've seen on television in a while. You know, like, in, in a while. And seeing that, thinking, well, they're on Netflix. Oh, wait, so is Power Rangers. You know, like, they could get this done. They need to try to probably change up their stunt team. But Simon Bennett was like, no, our stunt team is amazing. Now we're going to let you see how amazing they are. And that is what we're getting. So I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Simon Bennett really gets what the fans want, even though so many times people are like, no, he doesn't understand. It's like he understood the whole time. And that's what I love. Jezzer, same question to you. How moving forward with Power Rangers is having civilian fights a must for you? I don't know if it's a must, but I I do enjoy it. I do enjoy um seeing seeing like the actors actually get to uh show off their their skills that they have learned from the Power Rangers boot camp or whatever and seeing if um if it holds up. And I think I think that uh I think it does, especially now in the in this generation, like the the way that they shoot it's pretty good. The way that it shoots pretty cool. And I don't see uh, like if they're able to do these moves, I don't see why they wouldn't. You know, like I think that, um, you know, uh, I think that it it brings more to the show and it shows how hardworking they are and um, how skilled they are and it it even could even set them up for future roles after Power Rangers. So I don't know. I, I think agree. I think it's I, I think it's that. if it's not a loss if there isn't a lot, but I think it does bring a lot to the show. Well, Ranger Nation, we had you guys chime in on that same exact question, and I'm going to read some of your chats right now. Uh, we do have the Super Chat feature available. Uh, that helps support the show, but it also uh, gets your comment read. Uh, but Daniel has a comment first. I had something to say, because um, I have to remember um, a scene where um, they had uh, Zoe go ahead and, uh, well, the actor who plays Zoe, um, she worked with the... Uh, with the stunt coordinators for like a week on her own without everyone else, just her and them. And they made a scene where she got to go ahead and do the entire scene one take. And it was like fluid and she was fighting this person going over here, jumping over this da da da, da And they did it all in one shot. And it was like, Oh shoot. Like, we're getting daredevil level stuff where, you know, that daredevil hallway scene right, or right, the, right. or, you know, something like that. And we got that from her on power Rangers. So I, I think it's very important. All right. So we're going to go into some of your, uh, into your comments, Ranger nation and see what you feel about the situation. Uh, we had a few of these queued up. Let's see. Uh, team will says, I love the civilian fights, but they're not 100% needed. Rob Ramaya says civilian fights are fun because we all want to see the actors show their stuff before they morph into Rangers. So I believe we need it for a bit of that. Uh, Nathan Arondo says, I love the civilian fights because, uh, power Rangers are need, uh, need to make episodes feel good showing different fighting styles in the adaptation. So, Rangers of the Universe also says civilian fights are always great to see and shows all the hard work they put into training for the show, but it isn't a must-have. Um, I would agree. I would agree. Uh, civilian fights to me, they are not a must. I feel that we need to be able to show that the Rangers are capable even outside of the suits. It's kind of like how Iron Man 3 was, like you always said. Iron Man three was Tony Stark one, right? But because it took it us three, shows, it took us three movies to get to that exactly. But so we it weren't took us concerned. Thirty years. It took us thirty years to finally understand and appreciate. But the difference that is the Rangers but are. I don't like, agree with that line of thinking for one specific suits. reason. Iron, granted, we see Tony Stark out of the suit in Iron Man three, but we see him in the suit, starting in the suit in Iron Man one and two. Yeah. Without him starting in the suit in Iron Man one or two, there is no Iron Man three. Well, true, but the thing is, we saw him in the suit because we got introduced to a superhero. But the t question becomes, what does it take to be a 
hero. And it it's not the suit that makes you the hero. It's the person inside of the suit. But it was definitely the suit that made him a hero because that's how he became a superhero. Just because mm-hmm. he became a superhero, that's the thing. The super is the part that's added on. The super is the suit. It's added on. But what's inside of the suit, makes him that hero. is the hero. I don't disagree with that. But with that being said, we didn't get to see that displayed in Iron Man. So how would we have known that without any visual cues? We didn't get it displayed in Iron Man because just like how it is right here in Power Rangers, we didn't truly get to love and appreciate and understand it for 30 years. It took three years in Marvel time to But what I'm saying is your arguments reverse though, because in Power Rangers, we started with civilian fights. And then we, and now we're talking about reverse engineering that. No, Whereas in Marvel, actually, we started like, with him in the suit. It's I, not like he was fighting outside I, the suit first. I don't feel we started with the civilian fights. I feel we started with, uh, like, Scene Austin one, episode Philly. one, day of the dumpster. They get attacked by putties. They're not morphed. We definitely okay. fight. We definitely start without civilian fights. Okay, you're right. No, we no, we start with civilian well, fights. Okay, in Iron Man, we started with him without the suit. He had to go ahead and get hit and have shrapnel in. He wasn't fighting he anybody. Build. He built a suit for he sure. Build, he wasn't fighting anyone, but what he was doing was fighting for his life. That's dope. That's fighting for his freedom. That's what he was doing Shh. inside of that freaking But he's cave. not physically fighting anybody. He made it with a box of scraps. Like, we're t- <laughs> like, it's true. <laughs> we're, we're talking about two different things but the, what i'm saying is once again he took a box of scraps and made it something special and put it on and made him super but before he was super he was always a hero he wasn't always a hero he was, a, he was an he, asshole that just sounded perfect he was an Don't asshole it be. he was an <laughs> asshole that even his best friend was like yo you're 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 a dick like nobody likes you it took him that moment to realize that so he See, wasn't okay. a hero outside All right, you know suit. what you know what fine fine this is a subject that we'll have to carry on in a podcast. <laughs> it's true. I, I honestly don't think um, the the civilian fights in Power Rangers are needed. I think if they serve a serve a story, story purpose, I think that might that's better. If there's more time spent in like and the stunt teams, I will say this though, especially now current Power Rangers, uh, from what I what we're told, uh, Power Rangers trains the the Power Rangers train with one of the most elite stunt teams in the world. So. Yeah, I know that we want to see all that hard work on display, and I agree with that aspect. Robert's of it. right. Robert's right. But I also don't feel that it serves, if it doesn't serve a storyline purpose, what's the point? Mm. Okay. All hey, right. the fan club's here. He says, uh, sup, boys, about to DJ this wedding, but wanted to stop by and say, yo. What's going on, Dan? Yo, it's good to see hey. You, buddy. Thanks, man. We appreciate that. No, Mazel Tov to whoever's getting married. <laughs> yes, I, I, beautiful. Yes, that's awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> but yeah, this is where... This is where it's funny that we're talking about this, and and this is such a big debate in Ranger Nation, and I and I think that we all kind of like have different views on this, but I do I don't I just don't think the, and unless it really serves a story purpose, I don't, like why why what's the point what's the point? Well, I mean, well uh, Joe, Joe doesn't like Zord fights either, though. I don't like Zord oh, fights. Oh yeah, he I don't. doesn't. He yeah, doesn't like well, it. look at this man, we got a big super chat. Thank you so much, Jeez. Nathan. Uh, he says I feel like the civilian fights uh, fit the story. Then it should be added as much as the civilian fights uh, I can take and leave them. I, I agree. Like this is exactly what I was saying. Is like if 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 you don't need them, then why do you? Then especially if the Power Rangers now are going to be in uh-huh. space, and if we're really using logic here, are they oh, going yeah, yeah, yeah. no, 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 breathe no. on all these planets. Yeah, come on no, now. No, that is definitely they're going to need to be morphed and handle stuff like that. I mean, Q Ranger. Thank you so much for that super chat, Nathan. 20. That goes a long way. Thank you so much. All right, let's move on subjects real quick. Um, are we still are we still talking about the Simon Bennett thing on Twitter? Or are we done with it? Uh, we we didn't get to shoot out any speculation. Well, I why? Think it's yeah. safe. No, I think it's safe that we don't. Um, we I'll put it to you. I will say too, this. I'll, I'll say this. I, I will say this from 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 a lot of the conversations I had had more recently. Um, I, and I'm not at liberty to really talk about anything else outside of it. But I think that there's unfair criticism that goes into this previous uh, regimes that were doing some of those previous seasons, like, like Ninja steel or like beast morphers, whatever it may be, or even dino, dino, dino charged to that extent. I feel like they're unjustly judged for things that weren't necessarily their fault. And I don't think that um, everybody has all the information on this and people are as they do, uh, stating it from their point of view, because here's another point of Ooh. view. Because I, look, and this I'm, this is a nice little transition here, because Simon Bennett has his definitive points of view on what he's dealing with on the show. And granted, yes, of course, he's 
he's working on the show. He's he's show running uh, Power Rangers. It's it's a, a series on Netflix. Yeah, and I understand protecting the brand that you're working for. Um, and at the end of the day, he's a company man. Like at the, I'm not gonna that, that that is what it is. And he's gonna say what he what he's gonna have to say in order to for that job security. But with that being said, um, as I was stating, everybody has differing opinions based on your perspective. And um, I was also talking about like minded people in Ranger Nation that I'm very close to about perception on certain things. And the way that it's perceived to me, and this has nothing against Simon, more so against uh, the brand, it really feels, and I've been saying this all along. Now, I know that we're really excited about Cosmic Fury and we're really excited about um, whatever's going to happen on this 30th anniversary. Yeah. However, with that being said, uh, I, <laughs> I almost feel that like Hasbro, honestly, they're just getting, they just want this 30th anniversary thing to be over. <laughs> in order for them to just do what they need to do to restart this universe. To do what they want. I feel, and yeah, granted, do what they want. And to I, do what they bought it for. Right. Well, yeah, to an extent. I mean, there was it, it was it was bought when the old, old, the other uh, CEO was still alive. Yeah, it was bought when the other CEO was still alive, and they acquired it and took it from him because they said, well, hey, you know what? There could be a lot more done, and I think we know how to do it. Interesting that you say that because literally after that, nothing was done, and they well, didn't know how to do time. that. it takes time. It takes time. They had to go ahead and feel out and see exactly what was happening. There was a moment where Disney bought them because Disney needed to use them as a tester for what they were going to try to do with Marvel. Here goes Hasbro, and they were like, well, shoot, if Disney even did that, we can do it and actually continue with it. Yep, and they failed they failed with it so far. Yeah, so yeah, we'll see, but we'll see. That's no, 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 no. I'm excited for what is to come. I'm excited for what's coming, I'm but like I don't it. like the fact that Hasbro. Look, at the end of the day, and this is my opinion, just like everybody else is, uh, is available to have theirs. I'm, I can have mine. Uh -huh. I honestly don't think that the upper echelon of that brand really gives two shits about anybody in this chat, anybody on the show, or any of our opinions. That's that's me speaking from the heart. That's the truth. So like. Look, so okay, okay. Hold the so, curtain back so, even so further. Simon Bennett isn't. I'm part not of talking the upper, about Simon. No, Bennett. but I'm saying so he isn't part of the upper echelon. If you're thinking about, it. I think Simon Bennett. Corporate, corporate. No, order. I mean Simon Bennett's fed what he needs to, whatever they need to feed him in order for him to, you know, to, to make his show, and and he's going to walk that company line 100. percent He's not involved in, in in talks with public relations and in all this other stuff. Right. Why would he be? Right. They, like, no, yeah, he, yeah, he's yeah. there to make a show. Yeah. We're there to report on a show. At the end of the day, that's where it works. There's somewhere in the middle that. That I you look, it's very easy to tell. Very easy to tell. So Ranger Nation, for for all intents and purposes, when the power force first started, by the way, thank you so much, Larry Newbill, uh, for the super chat. He says, My bros for life. Same goes right back to you, my friend. Um with the power force early on in the spawn era, uh -huh. it really felt like fan first. And I know that's Hasbro's line, right? Fan first Friday, yeah, fan yeah. first, fan first, fan first. When the fuck has it ever been fan first for Power Rangers? When you name me a time in the Has Hasbro era when when it's been fan first anything, there hasn't. That's why we had to go ahead and make a viewing globe. That's <laughs> also why, you know, like, more Ranger Tarno, Nation more had to come together. And this do that. is exactly my point. So you say that they know you're what right. they're doing at the franchise, right. that, that they that they have all this kind of momentum going forward, and you're excited what they're going to do. But for those longtime fans that have been keeping this brand alive for the last thirty years, where what's in it for them at this point? Because, you know, question. that's a good question. All I'm saying is that it just seems that, like, it, it feels very, very rushed with the way that they're not rushed, but it doesn't seem very, um, it doesn't seem very coordinated with, look, like, Cosmic Fury is a really good example of this. Okay. You know how much care is taken into Power Rangers? Okay. Here's how much care is taken into Power Rangers the embargo was to release 8 a.m. on Sunday for the new season of Cosmic Fury, it released at 11 p.m. on Saturday. You think that would happen in any other major company that cares about a brand? I, I think that was the reason why they did that. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. I mean, I mean what major billion-dollar company doesn't know how to work fucking social media? I don't think that was the case, but I think that's the way they kind of played it off at the end. But I think what's your what's your theory, Daniel? Can I? It, it, it's a conspiracy, though. I mean, it's not. It's not. It's not fact. It's definitely not fact. But I feel that. Here we are. Um, let's be honest. Uh, Illuminati, Ranger Nation, all together. Um, all these people that have their their finger on the pulse, and uh, with 
just a tweet, they can change the zeitgeist of what Ranger Nation is. And they're all together the night before the panel. And it was like, we know that they're going to have a conversation where they're all going to say, so this is what's happening with Power Rangers. And we were going to be able to break the news of uh, what's happening with Cosmic Fury at the panel. They did not want their thunder stolen. And so the, immediately they were like, flub it. Let's go ahead and release this info. And uh, by doing so, we're taking the thunder from down under. <laughs> yeah, we're taking the thunder from down under uh, and uh, kind of blocking and controlling uh, the spin, meaning that there need there doesn't need to be spin because we're, we're running it. Like, I, I think that's what's going on. So I don't know about all that, but I don't know. I just, here's here's the thing. <laughs> and, and this isn't. It is what it is. I mean, is deal with it or don't, right? Okay. But I feel that, like, in all honesty, it, like, there's a great chat in here, and it's not a super chat, but I'm gonna read it anyway. Rangers of the Universe, uh, in my opinion, Hasbro is putting in more work on the D and D movie uh, and show Ooh. than they are in the 30 year anniversary of Power Rangers. I I agree. agree more. I agree. Writings on the wall, guys. Like, I, I, I don't feel like it's a doom and gloom thing. Power Rangers ending. It's not ending. It's it's going to continue, but it's going to continue in a different form. Yeah. Here is the thing, though, and and regardless of what Simon Bennett said to discredit the original story of um of the Saban toy split. And by the way, I never got a chance to really address this, so Ooh. fuck it, let's just do it now. Um, I feel that like, look, at the end of the day, I and this is my opinion. He, I mean, people can go on Twitter and say what they want to say, or people can tell you guys what they want to say from their perspective, from their perspective. I want that to be very clear from their perspective, because I know, I know Simon Ben is the showrunner of the show, but if you guys think that he knows everything there is to know what's going on with the franchise of power Rangers, you are sadly mistaken. And I'll give you an exact prime example of that. So prior to doing some of my um, early interviews with Simon for uh, the lead up to Dino charge and prior to that, even uh, yeah, I think it was not Dino charge. I'm sorry. Dino fury uh, for la for the first season and the second season. Prior to doing all that lead up, um, I was specifically asked by the Hasbro PR team, please do not mention Jonathan Entwistle. You know why? Why? Sam Bennett has no idea what Jonathan Entwistle is doing with that universe. That shows you the cohesion cohesion in that in that universe. So, so now you, let's let's put things on the table so for you're a second. Say, so and, you're uh, saying it's like uh, Netflix versus uh, MCU, like Netflix, Marvel versus MCU. I, I exactly right. You think of like, uh, wow. like Disney or Marvel TV back when, before Kevin Feige was doing everything, uh, and, and the Marvel films, right? Those are two different worlds that they live and breathe in. Same thing, believe it or not, with the Power Rangers PR teams. Let's pull the curtain real back for you guys. So the, the PR teams are ran by two different, OEPR PR is ran by a different company. And then like TV show related stuff is ran by another company. Obviously there's no cross connection and with film one of those. as well uh, film is film currently and god i hope that film currently is ran by a, a third party pr company when i really hope that goes to netflix because they are a better pr firm by far netflix by far than than what they're dealing with now and that's 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 a shoot my friend who's that um, Lionsgate? <laughs> no 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 uh they're they're going through a company right now a uh, third party um I'm not going to say the company's name, okay. but anybody that knows, you know, they're going through a third party party company, which I honestly have no idea why, because they make things more complicated than they need to be. I see. Um, there should be some level of synergy. But then I, I also understand why Hasbro's not doing it them, themselves, because obviously they can't even handle their own social media. So why would you put them in charge of their own their own PR team? Um Oh, but I, I do want to lay the cards out on the table for you folks. And and I feel that like, you know, I know Simon Bennett said that there's this uh continuing relationship with toy that the, uh, he talked about the rumors that we talked about two years ago. And he said that like, you know, they're going to have a strong, healthy relationship moving forward into the future. Yes, he did. But that doesn't make exact sense when you break things down. And I'm going to tell you why the investors call. So yeah, let's, let's break this all down for a second. We're really diving um, deep. 
going deep. Yeah, yeah, may as well, right? So that's a mic to drop there, man. Anybody <laughs> that wants to, and I and I feel so bad for Bryce because Bryce took a lot of a lot of grief on this from a lot sure. of people in Ranger Nation. Now, obviously, some of you guys in the chat, I mean, most of you guys in this chat are super cool and you've been super supportive, and I really appreciate that, and I really appreciate you showing that to the rest of this team. Because anybody that's met us at Morph Connor spent any time with us, we are fans first. Yep. And then we do this stuff, stuff second. So, um, and people can say what they want because that, just like this is my opinion. From, hey, from man, I, I, was got, able to I got gather, roasted last this week. Is, this <laughs> yeah, is, this man. Is, they are, they're entitled to their opinion. Now, let's put the cards on the table real quick. And this is no slight on Simon Bennett. This is no slight on, on anybody else. This is, this is me talking things from my perspective. My perspective. Um, and this is, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. This is a, a bit of an insider perspective too, mainly, mainly because at the end of the day, I'm going to break down how this, the, the toy Hasbro thing kind of shook down and, and what makes the most sense. Go back up because I want to see the numbers. Um, oh. so here's, here's, here's where we lie. I feel that like what Simon Bennett said to discredit us was not necessarily a hit job, but it's obviously from Hasbro and I'm going to pull the curtain Dude, back even I'm further. You, that's Wait, why whoa, whoa, whoa. they did what they did. Here's, for... here's the reason why Hasbro wants full control of like everything they're doing. That makes complete sense because it's their brand. I understand that, but let's be hundred percent honest and real about something guys really honest about something without all the Ranger nation. Nobody is watching power Rangers. It's a straight up fact. Matter of fact, Dino Fury season one was getting lower ratings than the unworthy. There was less views on Power Rangers than there was on Unworthy. I Ooh, just want to put that in perspective real quick. Hey, so I'm saying the hierarchy is changing. But <laughs> what I what I what I and, and Unworthy does a fantastic job and they deserve all the credit in the world. Very good. But with that being said, let's put that into perspective real I quick. I should be you just anywhere. you just bought uh, a franchise and it's at best, at best, um, it's not necessarily making you a return. No. So. Let's leave that on the table for a second. So now we know going into this, and 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 then track track the timeline here. It's all stated in podcasts that he's done with Range Command Power. I, I suggest you go back and listen to those. It's all based on his own tweets. You can remember you guys can't see him now because he's off of Twitter. But there's a lot here to back up some of this fact finding stuff. And if you look at all the evidence, I mean, you can be blinded by by the bullshit. I used to say this a lot, right? You be blinded by the bullshit all the time. People will tell you what you want to hear, especially if people in powers uh, leadership positions of power, uh, positions like that of course they're going to be heard but do the independent day independence day do the research <laughs> yourself um so let's lay the cards on the table dino fury season one was supposed to be one season simon bennett confirmed this on multiple outlets uh go listen to his interview uh for season one with range command power hour that was only supposed to be one season right dino fury, yeah right mm -hmm. then they told him you know what you're doing two seasons now right so he had to change the storyline that's fine yeah. that was that was what they were going to do okay Go back to my interview with Screen Rant. Um, when we were talking about Cosmic Fury, I asked Jordan and Kai how many, how many, um, how many uh, uh, finales did you shoot? How many yeah, end credit? How many, how right. many endings right. did you shoot? They shot multiple endings. Yeah. You know why? Because they didn't know if they were coming back or not. So let's back this up a little further. Okay. Uh, always on set, there was the rumors and joking around about Dino Fury season three. Um, it's a possibility, and this is stuff that happened internally on set. Go back to my second interview with the Dino Fury cast, specifically Hunter and Tessa. When I bring up season three, anything about reprising the roles, look at the shock on their face. It's almost as if they knew I was onto something. Now, I'm not going to tell you who said this, but there, I knew about Dino Fury season three way back when, mainly because um, – <laughs> <laughs> I, I just knew about it mainly because there was there was somebody that told me that was very close to the production. Let's, we'll just go on and say there that. We go. A um, little bird told me. Yeah, somebody very very close to the production told me that there that 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 they were already negotiating Twitch with those Twitch. actors uh, from from the previous cast to to come on. Um, now let's fast forward a little bit. So we don't definitively have a Power Ranger Cosmic Fury yet. Right. However, we doubt we now know it's a possibility. Yeah. Netflix opens the ball game for a whole new plethora of things. Simon, Bell Simon Bennett's telling his own original story with these teams. Okay. Uh, and to come full circle, here we are with Dino Fury uh, Season 3, which now we know is Cosmic Fury. Now, let's think about something for a second. Mm -hmm. On Twitter, Simon Bennett said that Q-Ranger was going to be too expensive to adapt. And he's correct. It wouldn't yes. be too expensive for the yeah. American audience to adapt. You know why? Why? Why would you? Many... Here's the thing, though. What Here's what doesn't make – and this is just – based on, on on fiscal responsibility, for those of you that don't know, financial responsibility. 
it doesn't make sense to me for a season like Q Ranger to be too expensive, but then to go and create your own completely unique suits when you could have easily have used like Kira Major in one of these other seasons. So you can almost tell that it was the plan was already in place to create when, with Cosmic Fury something completely original. Um, but then they realized, oh well, we don't have how are we going to do the Zords? And then I think that's when the deal. So I don't. I think that there was a definite split, and then I think there's a new deal in place now, which fulfills the needs for Cosmic or, Fury. Or or so, it's but still the way, part wait. of the old deal. Oh, go ahead, Jezzer. Or, or it's what? still part of the old deal because remember we skipped Q Ranger to go to right. Ryu Soldier. So well, whatever it is, the deal the deal has been revised. With that being said, though, literally after Simon Bennett said that their continued partnership with Toy is going to last into the future, Investor Day uh, pretty much debunked that because uh, it was pretty it was pretty much like they I mean they essentially said we're Power Rangers going to go full on their own production at this point. Original. So what would be Toy's involvement in a completely original Power Rangers? You tell me. Zords. Other than the the the, uh, other <laughs> I don't than think the that's going to be the case either because they material? stated literally from top to bottom the thing's going to be one hundred percent original. But ben, oh well, yeah, that's for, that's from the that's, Disney. That's a Disney. That's from the Hasbro, Hasbro Investor Day. Yeah, true. So when they say that, as far as completely original, that means that what they're talking about is everything that's happening besides or after Cosmic Fury. Sure. But because that, Cosmic Fury yeah, is going to so Cosmic right, Fury right, is but going that, to be that, the last bastion but of Remember his old statement. Footage? His statement was his statement was the continued partnership through the future. Mm -hmm. After Cosmic Fury, what future is he talking about? Well, one that doesn't include him. Well, one that doesn't include Toy either. True. But once again, it's one that he doesn't know of, one that he's not aware there, of. There there it is. That's there it what is. You said earlier. There it is. Yeah. So so that's I remember him early on kind of debunking a lot of these rumors, saying that if you know if people know somebody there, it has to be on a very low level. With erroneous statements like this partnership's gonna continue going forward, then the investor day literally kind of refuting that. What are we talking about? So then once again it goes back to also saying the, I'd love the power the power the power dynamic. We've talked it? about this subject for 40 minutes now. <laughs> oh I haven't God. thrown to one video package we yet. Haven't. We have a hey, is, there, there, oh, we so, have so much. <laughs> there is somebody they uh the A game says sure. Uh the interview asking about multiple endings. Simon goes on Ranger Board and so says there's only one ending shot. They I mean in the interview, I you gotta go find it. I think it's either our interview or screen rants. Screen rants, screen rants interview. Yeah. Go check it out. Yeah. Go check it out. They it said is. multiple. So um, unless they imagine shooting multiple <laughs> endings, I, I don't know. Um, I'll say, I'll put it to you guys like this, straight out. Somebody's oh, not being honest with you. And it's either coming from the Rangers well, directly or the show. Somebody's not being honest. Well, it could be from the person that wasn't in the room when it happened. It wasn't in Meaning the, room. the person who isn't on that higher upper echelon simon Maybe directed person... simon directed those episodes okay, so he would just, know if he shot a, well, a, a, yes. an opposite uh, another yes ending. he would but he wouldn't know what's coming in the future like you said earlier but he would have he, he would he know. wouldn't have at that point uh -huh. but that's why you shoot multiple endings right yeah to either wrap a story up yeah or to con continue a story along yeah because if that's the case and that's the way he ends dino it, look if that was the ending of dino fury without him knowing that he was going to have another season it's a pretty shitty ending because oh yeah, the end of the day, yeah. it, it's left completely yeah. open ended, knowing that you're not going to follow this up. Yeah. So just in terms of television, that's how does that satisfy? That's literally like you're you're leaving it on climax. Yeah, and you're walking out and leave. Well, you're you're pulling a uh, you're pulling a Twin Peaks. Yeah, yeah. I'll see you in twenty years. And so they, so <laughs> that so that line of thinking just doesn't make any yeah, absolute you, sense because there's no way that you think and, you are that good. There's no way that you think you're the Kevin Feige. There's yeah. no way that you think you're the uh, David Lynch. Yeah, and also the Rangers did say that they did not know. This is also in an interview. They did not know the fate of the show. Uh, they didn't know that they're coming back until March. So in, that's true. Until March, you can actually hear that on the panel that I did with yeah. them at Morphicon. Until which, March, which by the way, Hasbro did not want you guys to have. Yeah, until March. So Wait, if what? they, if, the, oh yeah, yeah. If if they didn't know until March, and they knew that they shot multiple things, it, it, it everything was still up in the air. Everything had changed just recently, and they had 
they had been brought back. And what may I mean, we've said it before multiple times on the show when these Rangers make a contract or when they have a contract, because we know someone that has a contract, we know someone directly that has a contract. You're signing for three years. You're signing yes. up for three years, regardless of how I many, have the contract. Yeah, literally yeah. on my They're, phone. In yeah. the contract, it's three years. So if they signed up for three years, that just leaves the window open for them to come back either through a crossover or, in this case, a third season. Um, does that contract still stand for people that are turning to the show for something? Because I remember there's a ranger that said. That's coming back. Uh, I, I don't know. I think the color is like like a blue? blue color or something. I don't know. But he said I would never come back if it's just for one episode. Did he have to sign that three year contract? I think that that was probably like an indent, like an like an added on deal because you got to think that like okay. so okay. just the way that things shake out, right? If if you're if you're cast as a primary cast member, your pay has to be higher. Yeah, than it yeah. pay. In his situation, it may be a little different because he obviously is coming back for this this reunion. Yeah. Um, and so then is, he, is he coming back just for one? Well, episode? it's if it's not pitched as an episode and more as pitched like a like a made for Netflix movie, that might be a different deal. Um, which which I'm assuming it is. I mean, I'm assuming that I'm not even assuming. From what I was told, is that it's it's one forty minute long thing. Yeah, hmm. Special, and, I guess. and and then and, and it's not. I mean, it's a little bit speculation, but we ha- we did get a little bit of a confirmation over the weekend on. on what a transition! Look at that, Jezra. Yeah. Get Jez, give Jezra. No, some but we're, for that we're you know what? Like, I want to give it to them right now, but I don't want to give it to them right now. We still have a few it's... things that uh, uh we can we have to uh, highlight. Especially we have Josh Perry. He's hitting us with another lightning storm. Yo, all right, all right, let's talk about this, Josh. Perry. Let's talk about this. Yeah, song. I mean, let's do that. So, let's are we getting? Are we getting? Are we getting Power Rangers Cobra Kai crossover stuff? Uh, that's what it looks like. We are. I mean, they did. They there I is. I love it. There is a Cobra because Sony has done this before. There is a Cobra Kai, uh, Ninja Turtle crossover that they did. So it's not. It's not. What? Yeah. Where? Like, in, like in just, in to- just in toys. In toys, they have a Cobra Kai Ninja Turtle uh, crossover that they did. So that is a, That is a thing. So Sony is totally on board. So who's who's wearing what? From, like, no, no, no! It's it just Cobra it's, Kai figures. It's or? just uh, the Cobra Kai uh, characters versus Ninja Turtles. That's it. It's not like they're not cro- like they're not wearing different. And it's not like Power Rangers versus Ninja Turtles. Okay, but so in the toys, that means like the packaging is like Cobra Kai meets yeah, Turtles, yeah. and then the toys are there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Cobra Kai people actually have toys now. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they have toys. They've Did had it. It's this? been like it's been like two years. Yeah. This. Yeah. Yeah. I knew none of this. Welcome Dude. to pop culture, my friend. <laughs> welcome, um, welcome to the life of Simon Bennett. No one told me anything. What the hell? Oh, but, my God. But, uh, you know, <laughs> we could try to explain it as much as we can, but we're not experts like our, uh, you know, resident uh, lightning, lightning collection dude, right? We're not, we're not Josh true. Perry. We're definitely not Josh Perry. We should hear no, from him. We're not on Josh Perry's level. <laughs> we should hear from him. Yeah. let's. Uh, <laughs> Josh, what, what do you have to uh, say about the uh, Cobra Kai Power Rangers quote unquote crossover. Hello Power Rangers Lightning Collection fans, this is Josh Perry of Finny Luminarity, and here's everything that happened this past week for the Power Rangers Lightning Collection. So first up for this week, the Yellow Ranger Morpher, revealed back during Power Week at the end of August, is now currently in stock on the GameStop website for a little bit cheaper than its original like retail price by only a couple of dollars. It's $52.99 right now on GameStop's website, and like the retail price for it is $55.99, so very, very minor discount there, but I guess a discount nonetheless. So if you want to get your Yellow Ranger Morpher right now, you have that option to do so on the GameStop website currently. Also this past week, the Zord Ascension Project Dragon Zord is slowly starting to make its way over to the US. Uh, we've already seen it released overseas and have some video reviews out on YouTube right now already for it. Uh, but we've already started to see some stores like Toe Collectibles post that they've gotten their initial batch of them. So more and more online retailers should be getting Dragon Zord here probably in the next couple of weeks for you to add to your collection. One of the biggest things to happen this week was the announcement of the Hasbro Pulse Premium 1027 event happening on October 27th. 
So this is going to be a live stream for a bunch of different brands held exclusively for Hasbro Pulse Premium members, which last year, this was just an unlisted YouTube live stream. So it's probably just gonna be the same thing sent out to Pulse Premium members again this time. But basically this is gonna be a special live stream at Hasbro's headquarters, which is 1027 is their address number in Rhode Island, if you're wondering where that came from. And it's been promised to have reveals and news and just kind of showcases, unboxings, whatever you want uh, to see from numerous different brands, including Power Rangers. Now last year at 1027, Power Rangers was the only brand to get zero pre-orders that year, uh, even though they did end up putting In Space Silver up on Hasbro Pulse that night with no warning. So 50-50 chance on if we get reveals and if we actually get pre-orders during 1027, but this is happening at 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Thursday, October 27th, so just in about two weeks. And then the final big thing that happened this week was thanks to an article posted on AMB Media back at the beginning of September, but not found until recently, in a big article talking about Cobra Kai Season 5 and all the different promotions and stuff that were going to go on to like actually promote that season, it was said that inspired by the series, Hasbro will release a special Power Rangers Lightning Collection Mighty Morphin X Cobra Kai Capsule Collection that will be available in Quarter 1 2023 exclusively at Target. So this confirms, and it's so funny to me that this was posted five weeks ago, but just nobody found it until now. But this does confirm that we are going to be getting Lightning Collection collaboration figures for Cobra Kai at the beginning of 2023 at Target. Now, we have no pictures or any idea of what these would look like. Would these be more versions of Cobra Kai characters? Or would these kind of be inspired by the Ninjetti figures already released at Target? How are, are they going to be two packs, single releases? Is there going to be any kind of promotional material to tie into this, like comics or video games like we had with TMNT and Street Fighter already? Lots of very interesting ideas here, but it does kind of explain the cameo of a couple of Lightning Collection figure boxes up on the mantle of a fireplace in Season 5 of Cobra Kai, so that's kind of, I guess, foreshadowing to this collaboration that we don't know when Hasbro is going to officially announce, but was included in this article five weeks ago. We just didn't know. And with that, that's everything we have to talk about for this week. Of course, until next time, you can check out the full episode of Lightning Storm available on the Toku Topics YouTube channel right now. You can also check out my articles over at the Illuminati and follow me on Twitter at Living Ranger Key or at Lightning Fig PR. And this has been a little quickie, Lightning Storm. Amazing. Amazing. Dude, like, I I'm in. I am in. This is Wait, you're going to buy him? You're going to buy him? great. Dude, he's not gonna buy him. He's just you saying know what? that. Yeah, I am just saying that. I'm just saying it on camera. I don't. <laughs> he doesn't have toys. <laughs> I, look, he has different toys. I'm just saying. I, yeah, I, I, I'm. Di yeah, I have different toys. <laughs> just not the not the Power Rangers. But uh, I'm a pop collector though. Oh, you I, are? I'm finding out slowly but oh, surely. Man. I think I'm gonna have a wall. You talk of pop. about something that hasn't hit me, and it's <laughs> fucking vinyl pops. How about uh, Dude, I have Beanie like Babies. a Black Panther one, and then I have... I have a Hawkman one if you want it. Oh man. I'm yeah. thinking, about, yeah, you, you know I do it. because Hawkman is black. So yeah, I want the Hawkman. Is it <laughs> oh, the black wait. Hawkman? Yeah. Oh, dude, that is it. Wait, I do want, you only do you only do black characters? Dude, no, I do like diversity. Like I have a Shang Chi. I have um. Oh, I have the the black lady do you, from wait, uh, question. from um. Do you have um, Superman? No. I mean, it doesn't get more diverse than a Kryptonian. What, what, what I would rather have is the icon. I don't even know what Icon is. Icon is the black Superman. That dude can oh. the shit out of him. No, he's he can't. Like, oh, you're talking about from the, the <laughs> fucking hardware universe or whatever yeah, it was? Yeah, yeah, man. Or or fucking Martin Vashir from Marvel. The oh. blue Marvel. I would go for that. Oh, I saw that too. figure. I saw that figure at Target the other day. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I'd go for that. I have the freaking, what's her name? The, uh, the, the uh, pretty much... Cajun or voodoo witch priestess from uh, freaking um, the frog movie, Princess yeah. and the Frog. Yeah, what? like I, I, there's something about just the characters who what about the new. I, all you have all the Asian say, New but, Japan wrestlers and not the bullet. No, guys? no, no. Actually, I have no wrestlers yet, and I'm trying to figure out which one I want well, to start as far as getting. Joe, give, who are give you him a Hulk I know you're a wrestling fan, so yeah, if you're sticking only yeah. diversity, you're only yeah, getting yeah, diverse right, wrestlers. Right? Like you're getting Rey Mysterio. I was thinking about no John Cena's, no CM Punk's, no Seth Rollins. Roman Reigns fits in there. Yes, he does. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's Lee, but he's not a he's not a pop figure. <laughs> yeah, not, not, really Swerve? nobody from AEW. Nope. You're not really getting any of the lead. Nope. Ricochet isn't one either. All right, then, guys, uh, we're we're, we're talking one, stuff one, that one, no one, one cares one about. One thing, one thing that I do love, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the camera. One thing that I do love about the fandom. I know you guys are very like you know keeping it keeping it chill and cool, but one thing I do love is after the news from PulseCon. You know, there's just a bunch of people that 
they don't want to give give props, you know, because because <laughs> of because of the toy split, you know, because of the toy split, you know, the toy split news, whatever. But they didn't want to give props about the big ending news that they had at the Dino Fury thing with freaking Walter and and David, right? You know, and then we had David saying no, and then Kimberly or Amy Jo saying no, and then fans going no, <laughs> Luminerity, Luminerity doesn't know what they're talking about. We got one dude in here who I, I think he's on board now. Hey, hey whoa, 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 he's on Somebody board now. He's on, he's on board. He he is he is converted. He's on board now. D H okay. uh, D H R two. Okay. Right. He was he was kind of like whatever, and then so like I what I did. <laughs> I've been, been like I life. always I always and I've been doing this for the longest time because I know how freaking how the fandom is. I bookmark all these tweets, all these fucking trolls. I bookmark all of them. You know, I love that we're talking about this in Power Rangers, and we just st- we started saying we wanted to do a DC show. Wait until we break into that community. Oh you, you know what? And then so like I started bookmarking all these tweets left and right. And then it took wow. it took six months, six months for uh, for the news to come out and to like prove all the trolls wrong, prove all the trolls wrong. And then they could have easy, easily just said like DHR said, you know what, I was wrong, and you know I I I apologize. They could have just easy, easily said that, but no. The thing that they harped on is like, oh, why well, you re- why well, you quote retweeting something from six months ago? Da da da. Because you were wrong, morons. It's not you guys in the chat. Because you guys you guys got Illuminati love, but. Twitter, man, six months to to show y'all wrong, and you can't even just suck it up and you know just say you know I was wrong, I was a moron, but you know. But DHR, hey, DHR, welcome to the Illuminati, welcome to the good side, welcome to the walk. Uh, thank you for seeing the light. So, <laughs> hey, you know what I feel like sometimes? We, I feel we like are the enlightened. I feel like the Power Rangers actual universe, like <laughs> in real life. Is is like we live in this dragon controlled Power Ranger universe that Hasbro's like Lord Dragon, right? Yeah. And then like we're like the Freedom Fighter Power Rangers, like coinless, trying to make brother, it better for the coinless. fandom. Well, I mean, speaking for DC, it's kind of like we are the light. Come walk in the light. Be enlightened. That's what the Illuminati is. Well, oh. I think that with, with Power Rangers very specifically, I mean, I I, there, I I have so many friends that are Power Ranger content creators and so many of you guys that follow the show. And I feel like sometimes, honestly, like I'll tell you this, and I tell this to a lot of people, and I'm probably never going to host another uh, uh, Hasbro Power Morph Con related <laughs> panel ever. So that that's I don't really care anymore. But um, truth is, honestly, like I, that experience left such a sour not on Morphicon side, okay. but like that that experience left a, such a bad taste in my mouth on how how like they view the fandom. It's especially on the inside. Boy, Dang. if I man, if I had an hour to talk about it. Um, maybe I do a podcast I mean, on it, right? I mean, maybe a podcast. I mean, you do kind of, but uh, like it's 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 the fandom is like getting mad at the wrong people, which is I th- I think is hilarious. I think at the end hilarious. of the day, the fandom shouldn't be mad about anything besides not, you know, getting things that you want. But like, I don't know, man. It's one of those things where there's so much investment that it. From a fan perspective, right? There's so much sweat equity investment you put into your viewing time because you're not going to get those hours back. And for that to be treated and be like, yeah, well, fun, it doesn't matter. It's like, we're just, what, what do you care? We don't care. We just want to do our own thing and do it our way. And I don't care. Like, literally, they had no idea that there was any cast announcements that happened at Power Morphicon. So then when they yeah. thought things leaked, they thought it was for me. And I was like, uh, this is a precedent that's happened for the last however many years Morphicon's been going. I'm telling you, that's why they did what they did at Power Morphicon. They were like, all right, we have to go ahead and steal their thunder. We have to cut them off. You know what? So thinking about this, and, and Toku, Chris, with, Toku, Chris, and, and Jezza are big parts of uh, organizing Power Morphicon with me. Um, honestly, one thing I was thinking, and it's something me and Scott said, and, and credit to Scott Zillner, man. That dude was all on board with it. But I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Why don't we just do the uh, – because I – mind you, I knew the Cosmic Fury thing officially. Like I had all the verbiage and I, I had everything that they sent me. And I was like, well, fuck it. If, if, if they're really going to screw us over like this, let's just announce it before they do. Fuck it. Let's make it a thing. That was, ta- that, was that, that was on the table. That was on the table. That was on the table. That was like – you should have seen me at my breaking point. my breaking points when – I would have never thought that it would be Jezzer and Toku Chris talking me down of like, dude, that was like, crazy. All right, let's figure this out. Let's, but honestly, it was a hop skip. Hey, this is away. this you... isn't the this isn't the first time that they've done this to us too. Like with the Beast oh, Morphers no. cast, oh, we no. had the Beast oh, yeah, Morphers. Oh yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. East Morphers cast. Yep. Go ahead, Jeff. Viewing Globe. They yeah, we had them for us. the Viewing Globe. Like everybody was on board. No, there's no, there is no, um, not from what I could see, there's no restrictions or anything like uh, they were contractually obligated to do because we weren't. I I think I think Hasbro is was scared. Like Joe has a way of like just having these conversations with them and them not knowing, not knowing that they are releasing like information that they don't want released out, and them <laughs> willingly giving it. You know, and I think Joe has yeah. a way of doing that, and I think that they were scared he was going to do that, but. We don't do that. Like we don't do that all the time. Um, you know, like no, look, if they tell me not like that's a that's a big difference. You're right, Jesse. There's a big difference between talking to somebody and knowing exactly what I want to ask and then um and honestly, that's a problem with the brand. Them not knowing enough about that their own brand to to be like, "All right, we can talk about this and don't talk about this." That's so like the problem so like there were certain things I don't, I don't even know what I'm talking about this we're, we're months late we're it's what a month after mm-hmm. uh Power Morphicon. Power Morphicon. well it's it's pulling the curtain back at a time that's appropriate people don't give a shit about this they don't care about me talking about my experience you'd be surprised how many wow. clips are, yeah. that people are taking from the show sometimes. if you want me to yeah. talk about it, I'll talk about it but other than that let's move on so um look we got this episode wasn't what we probably planned it out no, to be. It's, and it's really us just like not even I wouldn't say airing grievances, but we want to see this show. I think this is the one thing that unites at least the three of us and probably the 48 of you that are watching us live right now. Um, it's our love of this franchise. And mm-hmm. at the end of the day, like I want to see this franchise continue on. I want I want it to be. I want it to be respectful of the past. It's kind of like when ha- when when Warner Brothers was like kind of what you were talking about, Jezzer. It took a lot for Warner Brothers to change in order for them to get Henry, in order for what? them to do what? <laughs> in order Joe, for them to your mic's gone. Get your mic's your gone. Mic Shut well, up. well, I mean, you know, no, no, no. To be fair, to be fair, okay, the Rock fine, has been like fine. blowing it up like nothing. Like he does not that care. That is true, dude. Remember, remember when we knew what was happening and we were in a group chat. <laughs> And I think then, I told you guys the scene. I dude, like, yeah, this is the then, scene. no, but you said, "Hey, don't say anything." Oh yeah, yeah no yeah. one say a word. And then literally, I went to Twitter and I was like, "Oh, someone already wow, did it." Someone just said something, <laughs> and then we were like, "Oh, that person is connected to this person," which means this person told that person because the viewing was only like a room of twenty five people. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the viewing was tiny. Like, like in that in the room that I saw that movie in, there was like I don't know. <laughs> 20 of us, right? Literally, The Rock came in and introed the movie right in front of, like, right. Like, he was there. I'll po- post the video on. He wasn't wearing the red suit, though. I'll post the video on either TikTok or uh, Instagram or something yeah. somewhere later yeah. today. But um, it is. Should, should, the same. should we get into the nitty gritty of the episode? I guess it's a good time. There's someone that said, or this guy, he said, that not Trini daughter. Nope, that is random girl do trick. And then they also go on to say, Walter Yosh never come in Power Rangers Cosmic Fury. Why Walter run to Yosh? Walter, they never come to Cosmic... There's... Uh, maybe not I Cosmic don't know, Fury. I don't know what we're talking about here. No, it's... Well, the, that, okay, that person said they're Walter and... Uh, Walter and, um, and oh, Yosh they were are talking not about this, coming uh, to, yeah, I see. to Cosmic Fury, but they may be right. They may not be coming to they Cosmic may, Fury. They yeah, may, they may be may... only be coming to the yeah. 30th anniversary. Yeah, so maybe. Cosmic Fury is 10 episodes... 30 minutes long. That's it. I, I guess you'll be able to tell yes. real quick if David Yost is back in the United States yet, because Walter Jones is. Walter Jones Ooh. is back? I believe Walter Jones is back. So if David Yost isn't, maybe that's a tell. Yeah. Just saying. And then and also, uh, there is videos of, who was it? It was the Dino Fury cast, I think. By the way, huh. you know what? I got to get something else off my chest Oh, here we quick. go. Here we go. There was an original pink, there was a pink ranger out there, um... Oh, I put damn, that. I man. put I'm it up. Tell you guys. I put it on Twitter. Here it I goes. Did. Here it goes. Listen, I don't know what issues this person has, and the truth be told, at the end of the day, I've never even spoken to this woman. No. So, like, I don't know what what she's heard or what she knows. All I do is is report the things, and I and I throw them up there for you guys. Yeah, that's it. If 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 they want to deny them and try to try to take away credibility, fine. But when it, it all ends up shaking being true, you look kind of foolish. So, and I listen. Mm. I know the angles we play. I know that people, you know, people are lobbying to get their things done, and and people want to want to really hide behind, like, oh, you know, you know, it'd be great to get the original cast. They were all fans of the franchise. Huh. Are you? Because I could have swore you've been asked back two times now, and you said no both times, unless. 
were directing it. So like, I don't understand. Like, that's just me. Um, Wow. Oh, that's just the, the tweet anyway, the, tr- the tweet the tweet oh. is sorry that was a rumor not true as far as i'm aware hmm oh well interesting i wonder who tweeted that i wonder <laughs> interesting but they're all there every like every, literally everything that everything that uh you know i'm gonna i'm gonna say this i'm gonna say this t- to said person just like uh, a lot of what we've been hearing last years where's your source <laughs> Where's oh, your source? Because mine turned out to be just fine. If they, well, I it, mean, no, the, we can't, we can't, we can, we can look up their source code, can't we? Is that how we'll find oh. out? Right? That, <laughs> that's uh, that's rough territory for Jesse. We don't want to get into that up here. Um, <laughs> all right, so let's 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 move on, Jesse. You were transitioning us quite beautifully until I got sidetracked there. A little bit, a little bit. So, um, uh, we did break, we did uh, release the news about Steve Cardenas and Catherine, and they were on set. There's actual footage, uh, footage of I think his Jordan fight story or something where they're all like uh, hanging out together. So they are confirmed. So we have Steve Cardenas, Catherine Sutherland, David Yost, and Walter confirmed. Um, the person earlier in the chat said that's not Trini's daughter. That may be true. That may not be. That may be true. That may not be the actress playing Trini's daughter. But I'm gonna show you a few footage. Of a little this, bit of footage. Uh, no, this is this is the first one. <laughs> a few footage of uh, oh, okay. um, this girl. This girl's real. She's an actress. She is uh, was in Auckland. So let's see. All of all of this, all of this footage and stuff that she has on her, I don't think I don't know why uh, Simon didn't uh, tell her not to post anything. But all of that footage is in Auckland. She was in Auckland. She was uh, at Power Morphicon. Um, she had posted that she was at Power Morphicon. And no, no, like a lot of times, you know, the Rangers, mostly the six Rangers, are at Power Morphicon too, and no one even bats an eye because we don't really know who's who's getting cast. You know, at, yeah. the, at the announcement when you know at the regular announcements. Um, so she was there, she was ready, you know, probably like getting, uh, acclimated into the fandom. Um, but, uh, as we stated in the tweet, we do have some footage. It's not foot. First off, it's not footage from the show. It's not, it's not, it's not no. footage, uh, you know, her being the yellow ranger. Um, no. we have to preface that we don't know if she is the actress playing the yellow ranger, which the aforementioned what Yen was her name, Trainee's daughter, yeah. um, but she is at least, at the very least, the stunt actor. What was going on? Nothing good. <laughs> so, uh, you guys are waiting an hour and a half. So we have the footage, we have some video, and we uh, uh, there is. A, are we going to talk about the other casting news at the end of it? At the end of the video. <laughs> I, I think so, yes, but right now, while you're speaking, the camera should be on you. Casting. Oh shit! It should be. It should be on me. People want to see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, go ahead, Jezzer. Play so the video. Let's play the video. We're gonna play the video right now.
<laughs> wow, that was really boring, guys. That was so boring. <laughs> this no, is a, amazing. This is so a little all, boring. So first of all, I'll let you guys can I, know can I punch that was. You oh yeah. So Bullet Train. You? Thank you so much for the great people at Sony Pictures for letting us yeah. go on that excursion. Yeah. Kevin, excuse me, I just burped because I drank some beer. Um. Uh, who you will be seeing on our field team is going to be doing more experiences like that. Yes. I also want to thank Mike Chat. And here's the reason why we played that. Because uh, guess who else is back from New Zealand? Huh. Who? The young actress named Charlie that everyone is speculating is uh, Trini's daughter, Yin. Huh. She was there in that video package, if you saw. Interesting. Working with 87 North. Bullet Train. By the way, we're going to talk about that in a second. Bullet Train, Sony Pictures, thank you guys so much for this. Uh, thank you for the experience. We're going to be doing an unboxing on our social media. Check check out our Instagram <clears throat> our Instagram and TikTok for that. Uh, a lot of cool things in here. We'll put this here for now. Yeah. We were going to have a whole little skit Daniel was trying to put together in the last two minutes. But it, didn't happen. it wasn't going to be perfect. <laughs> but, um, yo, so look, the reason why that video was important, yes, that was ex ex exclusive footage of uh, Charlie. But the reason why that footage is important for a lot, and this goes this is almost like full circle, right? We started this uh, show off talking about civilian fight scenes. Yeah. And um, th I guess this is the reason why you keep certain civilian fight scenes in, because uh, all the people at, uh, at 86 North, 86 North? 86 or 87? 87 North? Now you got me thinking about it. Uh, they're phenomenal. That is uh, David Leach and Chad Stahelski's team um, yes. that you know from the John Wick movies. They do a phenomenal job. Um, and here's the thing. Fun fact for a lot of you guys that didn't know that. If you are going to be a Power Ranger, uh, they send you to Mike Chat to train. Yes. This has happened uh, ever since, I believe, like Power Rangers started back on Nickelodeon. So I know for a fact that the Dino Fury cast, or sorry, Dino Charge, Dino Fury, Beast Morphers, and Ninja Steel cast all train first, 87 yeah. North. That's they right. all train first with uh, Mike Chat. And his, one of and our, his one team. of our, one of our cast members uh, trained with Mike Chat also, right? Uh, Maverick. Yeah. Who? Maverick. Oh, Maverick. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Maverick did train yeah. with Mike Chat. Yeah, she did. She did train with Mike Chat. Um, so 87 North is just a saying, great company. It's a pretty good indicator that you know who your Trini, who Trini's daughter is. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah, pretty sure. True. Uh, someone the said guy who works at 87 North <laughs> named Ethan. The A game said, great so the guy. exclusive footage was a sponsorship. It was not a sponsorship. That was not a sponsored no, video. No, that wasn't sponsored <laughs> at all. Hey, no. <laughs> Thea games. Cause I'm going to just call you Thea games because the uh, A or Thea. Tell it, us now. It, it, they already said it's <laughs> the A games, but here's the deal. How come I'm able to read Matthew Thompson's name? Like it's two separate things, but you couldn't figure out VA games I don't to make know. it. I don't know. Yeah, How, why is that? Just in my head, you're gonna be Thea Games from this point forward. Um, so yeah, I mean that was cool. Like that was a lot of fun. Uh, I, I I really wish I was gonna do that experience. Dude, but I wish I was there. It seems like a lot of fun. All right, so we do want to talk about a couple. Or, or we're pretty much done with the show. Yeah. Right? Well, one one person this. said again. Simon confirmed Hasbro and Toy has a great partnership and it. The relationship will continue at the end. It didn't get debunked. It did get debunked at the freaking. What about at the investors? Yeah. Uh, like, well, I mean, says, wait, well all right, fair enough. It didn't get debunked by them saying, oh, no, we're officially cutting ties. That's true. True. But in terms of the message, if you if you saw the investor, it's not thing, even hard to read <laughs> how I don't understand how you're going to continue that relationship. If you're literally telling all the investors, hey, we're going all in and we're doing this 100 percent original, all of our footage. How what, what world do you live in? Why would you retain that business partnership the, if it's not serving both purposes? They they want them to say it out loud. They want them to say the Listen, partnership I know, is I know over. It's like it's like uh, the office. Like, I you know, declare bankruptcy. Yeah, like, right. That's exactly that's literally the thing. Look, that's what these fans want. Like what? I feel that like with it's almost as if and it's okay because I understand this. Not most of these fans come from like the entertainment background. And, and and that's perfectly fine, but you know, and, and this is another thing. Maybe maybe we should have patience with you guys as well. But truth is, like some of these things that you're seeing on the surface are only you're only being you're only being fed what studios and executives want you to want you to be fed. Um, great example of that, and I and I keep using Warner Brothers as kind of like my barometer <laughs> because there's a lot of drama that happened with Warner Brothers. Still, mainly. still, and Cartoon tar Cartoon Network is gone. Oh, is it really? Uh, they're they're phasing it out, yeah. Oh man, 
That's a, such a shame. What? That's breaking news to and me. They, and that and they're developing, but and they're developing or splitting and creating a, a separate studio for Adult Swim. Are they really? Yeah. Oh wow. Um, a great example of all of this is, uh, and a lot of you guys know. Uh, so there was a, obviously with Zack Snyder and the way that he did Justice League, the big thing was Zack Snyder was leaving the film because obviously the tragedy that happened to his daughter committing suicide. It's not the truth. He actually got fired. And, and a lot of people don't really, I mean, you can see it here and there on Twitter, but the truth is the dude got fired. So, um, same thing. Like these corporations don't want some of these things out there. Of course they don't. Of course they don't. But what we try to do is report things as accurately as we, as we can to the news that you guys care about. We also got Layla. Holy crap. We've been Layla. Forever. Layla. Long time. Layla. What's going on, Layla? Uh, it's great to hear from you. Thank you for the super chat. We we really appreciate it. Daniel's back in the fold. Uh, are you fully recovered? Uh, I guess to an extent. Fully recovered to an extent. Uh, you know. We are back at almost. 100%, I guess. Almost 100%. <laughs> it's like 91. We're back at 91%. I, I don't know. Um, and, and I could tell by the way we initially started off this show with the with, with <laughs> us not figuring out this audio situation. So we're definitely back at like 91%. Uh, yeah, we're old. But what I do <laughs> want to say about this whole thing is that for all of you uh, that are seeking truth out there, I know that sounds really weird and and macabre, right? Yeah. And especially during the October scenes. But on, honestly, Spooky all of you guys season. that are seeking the truth out there, it's right in front of you. You just got to want to accept it. The truth is out there, Mulder. And and understand the bigger picture that's going on. That's that's all I'm saying, especially with a franchise like Power Rangers. By the way, for all of you longtime Hasbro fans that are listening to us and watching us, um, there's a couple more shows that I think we're going to bring into the fold that I think you guys are going to like. So... And they're Hasbro related. They might not be Power Ranger related, but they are Hasbro related. Yes. So we're working out some 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 details with some fun people in it and, and starting to do some other shows. Oh my Matthew god, Matthew Thompson. Thompson. This is I, almost I like a reunion from like video. all of our old watchers. Matthew Thompson, thank you so much. Uh, he says the gang out here doing the Lord's work. Keep it up. Thank you so much, man. We love watching you. It's some of our favorite shows, Matthew Thompson. You, you're killing it. We can't wait Cobra for you. To, Kai. Yeah, we can't wait to you for that big breakthrough role. By the way, Matthew Thompson, what would be the dream role for you? What franchise? Yeah. What's the dream role? Please. Don't like, say and, I, and I pause, like you're going to answer me. You're not even here. But um, yeah, Oh, they said so. Uh, someone said Cartoon Network's not going away. Cartoon Network animation is being merged with Warner Brothers animation. So, it, I mean, it's being merged. Huh. So, kind of going away. So, is that also being merged under under the Discovery umbrella? Is that what's happening too? Or yeah. it's a whole other well, that's a whole other show for yeah. a whole other time. Dude, like, I, I wonder because a lot of things are falling under the Discovery umbrella. AEW being one of them. So that's kind of interesting. I don't know. Oh my God! Is AEW going to HBO Max? Or well, no? it, well first of all, AEW is not owned by them. It's just distributed. No, yeah, but distributed, but it's going underneath their uh, whole thing, and that's yeah. Their... Well, probably for the best because it's been garbage the last like three weeks. Ooh. let's get real. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, WWE Triple H is, is God. It's not <laughs> even. But you know what? It's not even close. Like you know, and this is our, sorry for the wrestling rant, but you just got to get familiar with us because yeah. Uh, refamiliar, refamiliar <laughs> yourself with us and, and figure out our fandoms. Jezzers Ninja Turtles, Daniel and I wrestling, all of us DC, all yeah. of us Power Rangers. And, um, and all of us all Marvel. Too, Marvel for the most part, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm Doctor Who. And Doctor Who. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I, we haven't talked about Doctor Who in such we a long time. We haven't because well, it's been like silent. I mean, it's after like I'm hyped. Oh, I'm hyped for the so, new Doctor Who guy, though. He's he's, he's Let hilarious. me ask you. So I... I, oh, I I sometimes uh, talk about this a lot because I don't actually think there's anybody closer to my watching. Uh, they're not into the same things as much as Jezzer is. So like, usually if Jezzer likes like a certain show, I'll usually like the same show. Oh, usually if I like sense. a show, like we have the same, we have very much a very similar sense. taste. What is the, the what, what, what is the most recent one? Well, the one that you got me on was obviously Big Shot. Oh, Big Shot is great. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Big Shot. Fantastic show. Like, so Jezzer pitched me on, mind you, you got to think about this because you know where I am in life. Yeah. So Jezzer pitched me on a show about John Stamos coaching a bunch of um, girls in high school basketball. Yeah. I, lo I love sports things, but I'm not going to lie. It, it took me, like, for the pitch to be like, all right, do I really want to watch a show? I'm not going to lie. It is one of the best new shows I've seen 
uh, this whole year. So it's good. Really it's good. so good. It, it's, it, I personally think this is what Mighty Ducks should have been. Yeah, Mighty Ducks is not wow. as good as Big Shot. Nowhere I'm, near as good as Big yeah. Shot. Dude, I feel that way for uh, Jezzer when he pitched uh, Clerks 3. And oh, I was like, Clerks it reflects 3. so much on you, what we are right. all going through yeah. in life. I was like, it's I'm scary. Dante. I'm Dante. <laughs> Who am I? Uh, Who is Jezzer? Shoot. Oh my god. I don't I, I don't know. Dude, I don't know. That's yeah. hard. I don't know. That's hard, know. man. I'm not familiar with the 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 Kevin Smith verse to enough to Oh know. yeah, well, oh man. Maybe the maybe I'm a little bit of J. I'm universe. a little bit of J. Just a little bit. A, you know what? A little a bit. A little bit. Not a, not a whole not lot. Not a whole lot. A little bit. Would J, would Shay be Silent Bob? No. He, he wouldn't be Silent no. Bob. He would Kevin be would be Silent Bob. Again. Yeah. Shay would be JD. Uh, JD would be Silent Bob? <gasps> maybe. That matches up. Wow, yeah, yeah. He's, I mean, he's got a little bit of the force in him. But yeah, so, yeah. You, you yeah. said, you said it, Joe. Um, Big Shot is a better show than the the Game oh. Changers. Easy, easy. Not even close. Wow. Yeah, Game Changers is okay. kind of okay. It's not great. Not even close. I mean, Game Changers is okay, but I feel that like the Mighty Duck audience that like I was, I was, uh, I was. Mighty Ducks caught me at the perfect time. Like I was the perfect age uh, to really get into that stuff. Yeah. But I think I feel that like uh, Big Shot uh-huh. does that same exact thing for that same exact age that I watched Mighty Ducks. I was at like wow. Big Shot's really good. But not only that, event Nicole they, Brown is amazing. I was just gonna say. I was just gonna say was the gonna adult say, cast the, in the show exactly, is just as good as exactly. the kids cast. That's the thing. The adult cast makes you is for everyone who fell in love with the Mighty Ducks, but now have well, grown and moved. I think with Mighty Ducks Game Changers, and mind you, I like Mighty Ducks Game Changer because I'm a Mighty Ducks fan. The first mm-hmm. season. The second mm-hmm. season, I think, is whatever. But the reason why I like it, or the reason why I like Big Shot so much and the reason I liked Mighty Ducks so much is you identified with the coach as well. Mm-hmm. And I think that that isn't what Game Changer had. So if Game Changers had Emilio Estevez. Well, they did. Or, they did in the first season. Yeah, exactly. But here's the thing. And it's not the same because, like, the mom of that team isn't. I don't it's like almost kind of, It almost feels like a millennial mom of being like, oh, just try your best. Do what you got to do. Whereas you want somebody that was that Gordon Bombay or in, in, yeah. in uh, Big Shot. You want you want that coach. You want you want that like John. You want that. You. you want that Cobra Kai Johnny. Uh, yeah. vibe you know like that's you want you want that dynamic if you got like the uh participation award mom it's not as like, but you know fun. what it's i like... think also caught me by surprise as well is that i initially would have never have thought i would have bought into john stamos as a college basketball coach by the end of the first episode i was all in you see him, well, you see him where he's standing out there, like when everyone else is playing, and he's doing, you know, hands on the hips. He's almost like, a, but how 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 removed he is from like his personal life, and he's so about like yeah, coaching. Yeah, like I actually think super underrated he's, performance. He's, he's really good. He's literally Pat Riley. Like you know, yeah, you see him yeah, out there he and really he's like, is. Let's go, let's go. Or he's like, what's his name? Where he's like, by uh, the way, uh, what's the name that made? Oh, Jordan that's another that good show. Great, where he's like, he does the tri- triangle, triangle. Yeah, Phil yeah Jackson, like yeah. Phil Jackson. He's like that. He is like, I live for this. It's good. Yeah, it's that, real. That's good. another yeah. good show too. Uh, winning time. Winning, winning time. Winning time is good. So, oh, so I will say that. All right. So, just talking geekdom, right? If you, uh-huh. if we're talking about like the best, personally, currently, right now, I think the best superhero movie of the year is Black Adam. Oh. Well, cons- well, no, that's not something that's like a big shock because when you consider right now this year all we've had is multiverse of madness and ragnarok yeah but multiverse of madness was you know? a letdown let's let's get yeah, and and we are still waiting to see what happens with wakanda forever right. so even with that right now you're right here's another one i will say this may be an unpopular opinion but i don't care peacemaker is the best superhero show of the year too i don't think it's even close i agree I agree. Peacemaker, Peacemaker was from amazing. top to bottom. That's a character that actually went through development. Yes, it did. Like, and then even at the end, they still went ahead and gave us a really good joke. Like, you know, and it was like it, it, that whole. I, I, so is that true about the fish? You, you shut up, man. <laughs> it was like, shut up, Barry. But I will say HBO Max is killing it when it comes to like show show time or uh, winning time. Winning time is my favorite show of 2022. Oh, easily. 
It's wow. Been, oh my god. Jezzer knows. Like uh Jerry Buss in that show is fantastic. John C. Riley is amazing. John C. Riley. <laughs> and I loved it because okay, here's a here's the thing, and this is slightly touching, but when I had my stroke and you know they had me under, my brother used to come every morning. And he'd read the book that the winning time is based off of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Until I woke up. It's called Showtime, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Until I woke up. And then he gave me the book to be able to continue and finish. Man. And then watching the show. So it means a lot. And it was just like, wow. Yeah, yeah. This show is so top good. to bottom, though. That show is cast Daniel, brilliantly. I, I, I don't think you've ever been public with, with, with uh, what you said. Oh, yeah. yeah, I had a stroke, guys. That's why I was gone for so long. I had a stroke. It's pretty scary, actually. Yeah, it was, it was, it was horrible. Made light of it now, but it was, it was not horrible. It was not fun back no, in not late fun. May. Not fun no, no. But, I mean, hey, like I said, the joke that I love to say is that I gave an arm and a leg so I can look this good. Yeah. So I'm fine. I need to have a stroke now, too. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, dude. Like, like, dude. mortality becomes a real thing. Um, yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> so look, I know, I know. I remember doing this show. I know. Remember when we used to do a Power Rangers show? Um, <laughs> I was thinking about this not too long ago. Uh, the three of us were on a show. We we speculated where would Power Ranger fit. Power Rangers fit best. And uh, I know a lot of us at the time said Paramount Plus. Now it's on Netflix, which I think is a great home for it. Yeah. We. I, I feel even the fandom. I don't want to say just the three of us, but all of us are feel like are like minded folks in terms of the way that we like our Power Rangers. Um, with it being on Netflix, though, are you guys excited for what the future lies with Power Rangers? Are you ready for the last 30 years to be essentially, I don't want to say a race because that's not true, sure. but uh, do you, are you ready for the last 30 years to be shelved for whatever's to come? Yes, I'm ready. You're ready. So, yeah, actually, you're a good person to talk to this about, Jezzer, yeah. because like Ninja Turtles is a great experience because – Ninja Turtles has been through so many different iterations. Oh yeah. Do you think Power Rangers um, can lead or uh, learn from from that? And what were some of the missteps Ninja Turtles took that Power Rangers may want to avoid? Um, I think that the things that Power Rangers should avoid is <laughs> it sounds really bad listening to the listening to the hardcore fans. I think the hardcore fans will hold it back. Um, I think that in order for it to be successful and to be get its heyday, it needs to be able to attract a larger audience. Um, look at let let's put it in, in terms of remember early two thousand like Marvel and superhero movies, and like yeah. now Marvel and superhero superhero movies now like um, they couldn't appeal to uh, a lot of the like the Incredible Hulk or the the original like. Uh, Hulk movie or whatever, um, even some of the X Men movies, they they tried to keep it so close to, kind of close to like the source material that it it lost them a little bit. So I right. I think I think with Ninja Turtles and look the nineteen nineties movies unprecedented like you you can't you can't replicate that. I'm gonna say in the nineteen ninety movie, the best comic book movie adaption ever. Like like pound ever? for. Ever pound for pound, if you read the oh. original comic book that was written pound for pound, it is the best adaption. It's not it's not a crazy story, but it is the best adaption, and it's like beloved, right? Um, you know they lost their footing with three, and then the another uh, underrated movie that they did was the animated continuation uh, in two thousand seven, TMNT. Amazing film, terrible, terrible, terrible villain, but amazing film, amazing character development. That's what like if Power Rangers can get to that point where they could create a, an amazing story with just animated, I think that would be cool. Um, I don't know. A lot of people hated the uh, the Michael Bay produced ones. They weren't. They lost their footing a little bit, but they weren't terrible. I mean, we've got on the second the first one, one was amazing. Yeah, the, I, the I second think the first one, one was great. second one is underrated. I think the second one's underrated because yes, we got we yes. got our first like. We got to see on the big screen Bebop and Rocksteady. It was fuck. They were fucking amazing. It was freaking shame. Were, and she one of them was a wrestler. Yeah, yeah Seamus. Yeah, Seamus. <laughs> um, I think the only misstep they had was um, Casey Jones. I love Stephen Amell, but he was not. Oh, he was not Casey boy. Jones. You know. He but I think not. and he look at look at look at Transformers, Hasbro's other property. Yeah, you know the quality of the movies got bad after, but 
the initial films, like at least first and second, uh, and maybe a little bit third, they were blockbuster hits. Despite the story being a little weird, they are blockbuster hits, and Bumblebee is still one of the best Transformers live-action movies out there. Um, and to be Do fair... Do you think that... Are, are we out of the Ninja Turtle rena- uh, renaissance? I think we're going to get another one. I think we're getting another you, one. You think we're on the verge of it? Yeah, we're on the verge of another one. Um, but And to be fair, with the Transformers movies... The source material, the G1 series, was not that great. Like, a lot of the hardcore fans were holding it to a high esteem, but it was not that great. So, like, you're comparing the Michael Bay movies to that? No. I, hands down, the best Transformers movie, uh, series is Beast Wars. It doesn't so, even... It doesn't even... In order, yes. in, order yes. for, in order for Power Rangers to not fall into some of the same traps that Ninja Turtles did, what do they need to do? They need to let the creators and you know the creators uh and the and the studio which is weird to say run their course with it because if you let if you let too much in, uh intervene if, like if you let the fans intervene too much with their nostalgia like them being so attached to it nostalgia wise it's gonna derail it it's gonna derail right. the story um i know it's weird to but, say but with, with power rangers having such a a vast and large universe. Do you think that's going to be cohesive to do? Would Power Rangers having a vast and large universe? I mean, it's yeah. possible. I mean, look how easily, you know, the comic book writers have been able to connect it or like make it work, you know? Even even a Ryan Ryan Parrott, even Ryan Parrott just going back. You know, speaking of comics, we do have Jin Saku in here that yeah. has a great comment dropping some, uh, maybe some news in here for yeah. uh, Boom Comic fans will love the animated show. That's all he's yeah, saying. Oh, shit. Dude, he, you, you, can't, you can't do that. <laughs> but anyway, so. Jin, okay, you know what? This is unfair. <laughs> <laughs> this is unfair. And this is incorrect. How dare you do this to us? Like, I mean, we're, we're scoopers and you're, you're, you're hitting us with stuff that's like, what? And blowing our minds. Yeah, like, but that's not fair. <laughs> like I was saying, I mean, Ryan Parrott did amazing with the Mighty, revisiting the Mighty Morphin series and creating like a in depth story of these characters that we didn't get to see in the, in the series. So I like, even if it's animated, even if they do, if they do a reboot for the series, I think in the right hands, it will be, it will be fine. And we as fans, Need to let our hands off the reins a little bit and let them run its let them run their course. So you're cool the with the last thirty years of Power Rangers dying, like not being shelved off. No, it? like it. Look at it in comic. Look at it in comics. In comics talk, right? Pre fifty two, right? Did the stories and the comics uh, preceding fifty two did they just cease to exist? No, right? Like. No, no, I get what you're saying. No, I'm all, I'm all, okay. all on board with it. I feel that like uh, I feel like the the franchise needs a facelift a, a, a little bit, and I think that we've tried. I mean, not, not we. I think that they've tried. I mean, the 2017 movie was a good first attempt. Yeah. Um, I it's a, good movie. it's a pretty good movie. I mean, I know I know a lot of hardcore fans don't like certain things, but overall, as a film, like it's it's it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's the best Power Ranger movie out there yet. Iron Man um, One is a film, right? Is a so film. I feel that. I feel like you're right, Jezzer. So essentially what he says, I do agree with, is that there's hardcore fans that kind of hold the franchise back a little bit. Yeah. Nothing against them because that's what they like. But sometimes to move forward in the right direction, you have to understand that you're going to step on a few toes. Well, I mean, sometimes it, it's kind of – I feel Power Rangers is doing what Star Wars wanted to do and is actually doing it right because with Star Wars well, the Star whole Wars thing doing was, it right now well, and uh, yeah, amazing but 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 when they did it originally when they were like all right hey here are these new uh like kind of here's a new story going on but we have to kill our you have to kill your darlings to be able to move on and give birth to what's new so it was like okay Han Solo is dead and here goes that's this. a difference though and then, because we're talking know, legacy characters dead. and continuing the same universe what true, we're talking about power true. range is completely different true but w- along with the so imagine like, restart in the MCU, or are you just going to restart the MCU? Oh. Star Trek's a really good example, actually. Oh, yeah. Star um, Trek is a great example. It's a series that's been yeah. on for the last 60 years. Or yeah, 60 years, and then right now the they're doing, like, there's the Kelvin timeline, right. and then there's the, yeah, yeah, so that's true. they're still continuing on with their, and a right. matter of fact, You're I mean, right. that's probably the best example we have so that far is. of 
of Power Rangers is that they try to deviate, which worked, by the way. The Chris Pine stuff did work. Uh -huh. But we've we've seen we've seen Star Trek deviate to that. And now they're like, you know, we're going to go back and, and satisfy our older fan base. That's the thing, though. That's the biggest difference with Star well, Trek. They are, but they're also like it depends where you're looking at Power Rangers from, because in the in, in the comics right now, here they are hitting us with uh, the uh, Morphing Masters. And then here goes TV trying to but catch up. That's to different because you're asking you're asking an audience to to move to another medium with you completely. Well, no, but here goes, but then again, here goes um, like television trying to bring you in slowly to it by giving us some more from masters. I agree. All that stuff. I agree with that. But with that being said, like I said, though, where we are in power Rangers is where star Trek is with the Kelvin universe. Okay. Is that now we're at this tipping point of like, do we start something completely new? Or are we going to pay respects to the last however many years came before? Star Trek did something very interesting and kind of merged them. Merged them together, which together. is something that we could do if they actually go ahead and I mean, we look, We know that the, the, the Power Ranger multiverse does, does exist. Well, if they put Draken in live action, then we have no worry. But at that point, are you going with Jason David Frank to play Draken? <sighs> I don't think he's going to. I mean, I think he would. To play for Draken, yeah, for yes. Draken. I mean, that would be that would be a the question song. is, honestly, do you need him to play Draken? Like well, if you're then, trying to are really you gonna have Power Rangers. on film on, on camera, or are you yeah. just gonna talk about? It? No, have him on camera. What okay, you... then yeah, you bring him back. You need so in your in your head canon, it, it always needs to be JDF portraying Tommy. Yes, because no having, matter what, having our shining star actually fall to Earth, having him actually be our quote unquote our, our Satan. But you're that's but you're okay with having multiple different actors play Superman, but you need this one actor to continue to play this one guy. You know, in every I, universe. I would have said I would you know, I would have said well you know f it let that happen. But the thing is, I mean, look what we're getting right now. Freaking in DC, we're getting Constantine, and we're getting Constantine coming back as. John Wick freaking Constantine, which is great because I love that movie. And then on top of that, if you look at it, like having that happen, when we saw that promo that he shot for the comic, sure, it was like, I need this to but happen. But you don't think that there can be another actor that can just play the role? All right, name a name. Any actor. Anybody. Name a name. Just or name a name. Of who? Who should come in as Draken? That is not JDF. Ooh. Fans, fans, you guys. I don't give a shit if it's give Luke Evans. It, it, can be, it can be fans. anybody. It could be Luke, literally anybody. Uh, Luke Walton, uh, not Luke Walton. Instead of JDF. My whole point is, so in your in your head, can it? No matter what, even in the 2017 movie, if they were gonna make Tommy uh, a female, oh, it no, still no, needed no, to be oh, JDF. No, 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 no. That no, that's different. Why? That's different. What, what's the difference? You want him to come back as Draken. If he doesn't come back as Draken, don't come back. But wait, I asked you this exactly. I said, so in every universe, it needs to be JDF playing Tommy, and you said yes. Well, only if it's Tommy the. F if it's if it's broken Tommy, delete delete. If it's if it's shattered Tommy, if it's shattered grid Tommy, if it's Draken, I wouldn't I time. wouldn't like I'm, I wouldn't be opposed for them bringing JDF back. I think that'd be really cool. However, let's be honest. There there's there's other actors out there you can get to play yeah, a role you, for. You know, really you, know what, you, know, you know what it'd be like is it'd be like uh, when uh, what's the dude that played the original Spock? I see Matthew Thompson. Yeah. <laughs> The original Spock, where he came back in the Pine movies, where he played himself, but you also oh, yeah. played, but yeah. you also have Zach uh, Zachary Quinto as and now know. there's a new yeah. Spock like in yeah, that yeah, universe. Yeah. So like yeah, that's it's true. the same thing. So I, I feel like you can have like that's a you can have yeah, you especially can. if you're trying to play because you got to think you want JDF to come back. You got to think Lord Draken. I want him to come back as Draken. I get it. That's I get it. it. I get it. But we also have to understand Lord Draken is all of what, fifteen years old, right? Is he? Well. He becomes, he gets recruited at 15. He ages up a little bit. How, yeah. how old do you think he is? Honestly, I think he ages up and we actually missed 15 years. We're not seeing his, I think we missed we're not seeing his years. evolution in real That's time, what right? Saying. I think we missed 15 years of him growing because think about that connection that he had with Finster that we only got to see a little bit of as far as them establishing it. Sure. And then after that, the fruition of it. But we never got to see Finster show up and say, if, you know what? Rita was horrible to you, but I love you at the sun. If we're capping off the original series and I say, yes, bring in Lord Draken, I feel like that's something they should have done a while ago. But with that being said, it doesn't mean that, and I, for me, I don't think an, it, another actor can play that role if we're trying to build out that character. Yeah. That's all okay. I'm saying. Okay. Uh, Ranger Universe says Tanner Buchanan from Cobra Kai would be amazing, Tommy. Great actor, uh, great fighter. I think he's a good no, fit. That's lazy casting. Huh. 
Oh really? You I, think so? I, I I find it I find it so lazy when Ranger fans keep posting that on like Who is po- Tanner on Cobra Khan? He's uh Johnny's son. Like when when <gasps> Wow Yeah, when when, okay. when Ranger fans start just casting the whole cast of Cobra Kai for Power Rangers. You guys like, <laughs> you like, guys need on, to guys. just get out of your freaking box. That's and, that's literally yeah, quote unquote yeah, stunt casting. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's like <laughs> come they on, go, they they, go to 80, they, are, they <laughs> already have an established you know uh, uh, thing. So like, why are you gonna why are you gonna like try to box them into a role that you know that, that it's, it's just lazy casting. <laughs> I agree. I agree. All right. I well, look. It. I, I love it. Like, do we have a do we have a, a fan club video this week or did we? I think we ran a little long this week. It should be fine. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Uh, I think that's going to do it for us, I, though. I think we'll, we'll go out the way we came in. 45 what? viewers right now. It's <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> thank you guys so much for spending your Saturday with us. Um, I know that we talked a lot about Power Rangers, but a lot of other things, too. Yeah. That's just what you're going to get here yeah. on the Ranger Wrap-Up. Uh, thank you guys, though, for streaming with us, watching us. Uh, please enjoy your Saturday, no matter where you are. But I think that's going to do it for us, guys. Um, we are going to be on social media a little bit later. We're going to do some yeah. uh, bullet train unboxing a little bit later. Uh, hey, hey, we might be some podcasts back. I feel like there's a nice. lot that I still have to get off my chest about this whole <laughs> experience I had with uh, Hasbro. But whatever. We'll talk about it at some point in the future. But thank you guys so much for joining us on this beautiful Saturday. Uh, where can everybody find you on social media, Daniel? Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter at BS Galactica. Or you can find me on Instagram at Battlestar Galactica. And, uh, yeah, oh, Facebook at Battlestar Galactica. Jezzer. You can find me on all social media at Jezzer Zeus. You can find me at Joe Luminerti on Twitter. I post a little bit on Instagram at the same tag, and I'll start up a TikTok. I think I got one going. Oh, I got Uh, got one. But that is going to do it for us here at the Ranger Wrap-Up. Thank you so much for joining us on this beautiful Saturday. Until next week, guys, we will see you. Please hit that like, share, and subscribe button to stay up to date with everything trending in In geek geek pop culture. culture.